What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. Uh, for breakfast, I had a jalapeno cheese bagel. Um, the funny thing is, is that when they bake these jalapeno cheese bagels, they um, make them in such a way to where um, the jalapeno sort of cut off, uh, sort of fall off as you're cutting the bagel um, in half to put into the toaster. Um, and so it wasn't really a jalapeno bagel, it was like a cheese bagel with like naturally essenced like jalapeno flavoring. Um, and it, you know, it was still very tasty, but as I was cutting the bagel, the jalapenos fall, it fell off, and so I just ate those. Um, but yeah, um, I had normal cream cheese with it. It was pretty good. Um, I cut it in, once I cut it in half lengthwise to put it in the toaster, once it was done after I put cream cheese on it, I cut it, um, like you see the bagel from the top down, I cut it, I cut it this way. Um, I need to figure out what, people say lengthwise, I don't know what that, <laughs> unironically, I don't know what that means. I, I think it's like like hamburger hot dog, like hot dog is lengthwise, um, but I don't know what the other one would be. Like what, what's the other one other than lengthwise? I don't know. Um, for lunch, I'm not gonna have anything, and uh, for dinner, we're having beef stew. Um, I woke up at 8.30, I had set my alarm for 7.50 though. Uh, but I woke up at 8.30, I got around 9 hours of sleep, um, and then at 10.25 I started exercising on the treadmill, um, which is actually 2 minutes earlier than when I started exercising on the treadmill yesterday. Yesterday I started exercising at 10.27, uh, um, but yeah, I started exercising at 10.25, um, and the exercise um, took an hour and 3 minutes. I ran 6.2 miles and I burned 706 calories. Um, so, yeah. Um, and now it's noon. Oh, this morning I had also bought a ThinkPad T480. I've sort of been putting it off because I wanted to wait for good deals, but school's starting in September, so I, ju I just need one. Um, this is certainly not the best way to get a deal, but I just got the um, sort of um, the buy now. Um, like, um, ThinkPad T480, um, and I just had it ship with, like, the $15 two-day shipping, um, because I need the laptop, I need the laptop, I need to set up Arch on it, um, so then I can do it for school, um, and it'll be nice having an operating system that I'm comfortable with to do school work on, um, but, um, yeah, because, you know, I use, whenever I use a computer, I use Linux, um, and whenever I have to use Windows, it's always fine, but, um, you know, I always, uh, in, in Linux, there are, like, very specific, um, like, keyboard shortcuts, like, um, like you do, like, for i3, there are Windows shortcuts, like you do, uh, Windows Enter to open a terminal, and then you do Windows V Enter to open it up under, but then you could do Windows H Enter to do, um, uh, on the side, and then to like close things, you do um, Windows Windows Control Q. But if you have a terminal open, you can actually do Control D, um, and that's a terminal specific thing. But um, yeah, so if you want to like, let's say, open up um, like, let's say, I open up a render, right? Um, I just do um, Windows Shift Q to close it, um, and just like stuff like that. And you do like Windows Five to go from like workspace to workspace. You can see it up there. I'm going from like from workspace to workspace when I do that. Um, um, and just stuff like that, you know? And um, something I always end up doing is, oh, it's also Windows, uh, this is kind of a bad example, but it's Windows F to go full screen. And so I do Windows F all the time on Windows and it just brings you to Feedback Hub. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, don't, why are you bringing me to Feedback Hub? And um, on the school laptops, they were very locked down, you couldn't change the key binds, so I was just, I was, I was out of luck. Um, I got my work done, it was fine, like I know how to use Windows, it's just um, muscle memory, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to get rid of, um, especially when you go home and you use an operating system of the, that, that's the different operating system than what your school laptop was on, right? Um, but, yeah, um, I'm gonna get this laptop, I might try BSPWM, I might try it. Um, 
So right now I use the i3 window manager and it's sort of a meme, you know, you, oop, I need the, I took a shower, I forgot to get my watch, it's charging still. Um, using i3 with Arch is kind of a meme. Uh, it's like, oh, if you want to be like the type of guy who, um, like, one sec. Um, if you want to be the type of guy who like has like a terminal and like has like Neo Patch open, you know, you like you'd use like you would use um use Arch with i3, you know, and that's like the meme. Um, but honestly, you know, I used to use KDE Plasma, and because i3 with the meme and it had the brand recognition, I just switched to it because I wanted to switch to a tiling window manager. But um, I'm pretty sure BFP.com is a dynamic window manager, which means um, you don't have to specify where the windows go. They're always in a preset pattern, which I always like. Um, well, I like the concept of it. Um, and uh, the only thing that's been holding me back is you have to get a separate hotkey daemon. So with i3, you tell i3 for Windows Enter to open a terminal, but um, you would get BSPWM, which is just the window manager, and then you would have X hotkey or something. I, I, I think that's its name, but um, you, you get like X hotkey, um, and you would do that to do Windows Enter to open up the terminal. And uh, that's just a little more granularity that I don't necessarily want. But if you want a dynamic window manager, what, am I going to use DWM and do my own patching like a crazy person? Like, you know, I don't want I do not want to deal with DWM. So BSPWM seems pretty good. Um, there's like a lot of good things for it. Um, and I really like Polybar, but um, Lemon Bar seems cool because you can just run scripts in the bar. Um, the way Polybar works is it has its own sort of like module system um, and that works. Um, but the thing is, is you have to point modules to scripts and then the scripts tell the modules what to do. Um, but with something like Lemon Bar, everything is a script. So it's, it's, you're just running little scripts in a bar up here. And um, so it's a little less um, things. Um, theoretical, perfect setup, in my opinion, would be something like, I don't know, like, like B BSPWM with like Lemon Bar and um, I don't know, for, for a web browser, like like Brave or something. Um, you know, I've really been liking Brave. I like how when I'm on YouTube, it doesn't like act a little weird. Um, whenever you're using YouTube on a non-Chromium based browser, it's always like a little strange and animations are just a little choppy and everything seems a little weird. I feel like when I'm using Brave, um, it's like, you ever use like Word on a Mac? Uh, I only used Word on a Mac when I was in elementary school, when we had Macs. Um, but I remember the experience being like a, just a, li like a little different from the Windows experience. And when you use Word on Windows, it's perfect, right? You don't even, you don't even think about it. But when you use Word on Mac, it's like a little weird and you gotta think, it, like sometimes things happen that remind you you're using Windows on Mac, um, that you're using Word on Mac. And um, you know, when you use uh, YouTube on a non-Chromium based browser, just little things constantly remind you that you're not using like the full sort of Chromium ecosystem meme. Uh, so it, um, it's nice to use Brave so then everything acts normal. Let me see if I can, there we go. Um, but yeah, Brave's good. I really like Brave, I really recommend Brave. Um, my only problem is they have less customization and um, if, you, if you really wanna customize, like. I have shown this, so one of the most popular videos on my channel was showing off my LibreWolf configuration. But if I open up LibreWolf, it's going to ask me if I want it to be my default browser. Oh yeah, no. Um, if I open up LibreWolf, you can see this bar here takes up way less space than my Brave bar, and that's because I customize it to do that, right? And even when you highlight over the tab bar, which is, which by the way, even if I open up a, um, even if I open up like Proob.org or something as an example, um, or even my own website. Man, I should advertise my own website more. Um, or even my own website, right? Um, you highlight over it, it still doesn't even take up that much space, right? And it's great, and I have some extensions up here and some stuff down here to maximize the address bar space. I have way too much stuff up here. As you can tell, um, with Brave, I've sort of minimized the amount of, because when do you, like, when do you need your extensions to constantly tell you what's going on? If you cannot remove the address bar and have it automatically hide, like how I had on LibreWolf, why do you need, like when you're watching a YouTube video, why do you need an icon there always? Um, like some very other minor 
customizations I did with the Libre Wolf is um, you can see that I removed the X bar here. Like you, there's not an X button like how there is here. Um, so then let's say I have a bunch of stuff open, right? I'm switching between them, right? I don't accidentally press the X button uh, because you can just middle click with your scroll bar, or with your scroll, scroll wheel on the tab and it closes the tab, you know? So why would you ever need the X button? Um, just like small stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah. Do you guys hear that? I don't know what that is. Um, man, I need to record my videos earlier in the morning. Whenever I do, I can't on weekdays because you know I come home from work and I have to get ready for bed as soon as I come home, right? To get eight hours of sleep. But um, especially when, um, like, in the mornings, my dad's typically working from home and he just has the news plan. Like he wakes up, you know, at five and he turns the news on on the TV, and then he turns it off when he goes to bed. He, he always has the news on, and it's just sort of background noise. We have the same brain worms, except I have it for YouTube, right? Um, maybe maybe the news is, you know, a little more useful, right? But um, we, we still have weird, like, media background brain worms. Um, so um, that's the only thing playing, and he's just sort of quietly on his computer doing his work because he's working from home, um, and my mom's at work, so my dad's not talking to anybody unless he's in a meeting. And even if he's in a meeting, he's not even talking that much. And the TV's off. So that's like the ideal time to record my video because it's silent in the background. Um, but you know, whenever I record my video and my parents are home and it's later in the day and they're talking, I have to wait until like they go outside to look at the flowers or like the tomatoes growing, which are actually kind of wilting now because it's basically fall. Um, but I always, I always have to like time it, you know, to where they're like being quiet or it's a quiet time in their show or something. Um, and it, it's, it's nice recording my video earlier in the morning. Um, these past few days I've been very irritated. Um, I know like super irritated. I think, um, you know, since I've turned 18, I've had to deal with a lot of financial stuff because I want to get a lot of stuff done early. Um, you know, you know, the sooner you get a credit card and the sooner you can get good credit and the better credit score you have by the time, um, good credit matters, right? Um, like you're getting a car or like a house or something, right? Um, so you got to do that as early as possible. Retirement, you know, um, I'm trying to find out what the best um, portfolio is and what funds to invest in for my the Roth IRA I set up on August 24th, one day after my birthday. Um, and, you know, it seems like, like a three fund portfolio seems like a pretty good idea. And for those of you who don't know, that's a fund with, um, with a U.S. Um, stock index fund um, and uh, international stock index fund and bonds. Um, but also, I'm not sure if that's an entirely great idea because interest rates for cash are really, really, really good right now. So should I just have some cash in my retirement just to diversify? Like, of course, obviously, if I want like, like having cash is an even lower risk in investment than bonds, right? Because bonds have like a 1% return. But I don't know, like cash on fidelity has like, has like 0. like four two percent interest. And that's crazy. Like that's the highest it's ever been, right? And that's, that's insane, you know? I don't know, I don't know. Um, and according to my dad, there are weird things happening with bonds, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I don't know how much I trust my dad on that, but, um, well, I'm sure there are weird things happening with bonds, but I don't know if that negates them from being a good investment, right? Um, you know, if you, like, I think there's going to be a recession probably next year, right? Because that's, um, you know, what a lot of people are saying and, you know, they explain it and they explain things, you know, better than I could explain them. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You know, this person seems to know what they're talking about when people talk about a recession happening. Um, and whenever people talk about a recession not happening next year, they always talk about the economy now, but 
and they're like, oh, you know, I don't know. I think there might be a recession next year. Um, and so I worry, like, I know that absolute worst case scenario, like worse than the Great Depression happens next year, over the course of like 50 years, I'll still be up in 50 years than I am now, right? I'll still be higher, right? But the thing is, is I just, I just worry. Like if a, if a recession is gonna happen next year, should I just keep my current Roth IRA in, in cash until the market crashes and then I can do my portfolio? Like set it up with my portfolio? Like, I don't know. I know they always say time in the market beats timing the market. Um, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this time I could time the market guys, right? Man, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, also the, the credit card stuff kind of stressed me out. I'm just waiting for my credit card to arrive. Um, I actually haven't figured this out. Um, apparently credit bureaus decrease your credit score if you use over 30% of the credit limit of your credit card. Um, and my current credit card has a $1,500, it might be 1200 I think it's $1,500, has a $1,500 credit limit, which I'm, you know, very lucky to have. Um, because it means I can put more things on my card and get more credit quicker. Um, but I actually don't know what 30% of 1500 Okay. Maximum, absolute max, I can spend 450, I can carry a balance of $450 on my card before I immediately pay it off, right? Um, but in some places I heard online, they always say, oh, oh, you can do 30% of 15, it, like you can do 30% of your card, but I recommend only doing 10% of your card. And I don't know why people say that, but I've heard that from more than one of these like financial people online. Um, so. 10% to 1,500, oh, I don't know why I had to look that up, it's 150, you know, I just had to change one number, it seemed easier, but, you know, actually looking at it, of course, it's 100, of course, 10% of 1,500 is 150, right? Um, but looking at it, I don't know, 10% of 1,500 is 150, and I don't know if, like, I don't know how valid a statement of, oh, um, keep your, keep your balance on your credit card, um, under 30%, keep it at 10%. I don't know how valid that, that statement is. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the reason why I got the, um, let me look up my receipt. I want to see what I got. Because, you know, this morning it made a lot of sense, but by now I've sort of forgotten exactly what I got. But think that, because there are a lot of different models. Why did I go to Outlook? I have my eBay hooked up to my Proton now. Yeah, okay. Um, for $316 plus tax plus shipping is 366 which is crazy. Um, but for, yeah, which is crazy for like a five-year-old ThinkPad. But um, honestly, you know, I just, I need this laptop. I need this laptop and I'm willing to pay whatever for this laptop. The reason why I went for something like a ThinkPad T480 compared to something Libre bootable like a T420 is because I'm not that... Um, to quote one of my very old thumbnails, I don't care about free software, which um, was a very um, sort of clickbaity thumbnail. Um, but uh, I, I do believe that ideological sort of adherence to free software, like, like what Richard Stallman does, um, or like what a lot of people do who seem to not have Strict adherence to free software seems a little silly to me. Um, like, 
there's a reason I use the YouTube.com website as opposed to like Nvidia's or something, because Nvidia's has less features than YouTube.com, and I upload a video to YouTube.com every single day, and you can't upload videos on Nvidia's, so I don't use Nvidia's. For those of you who don't know, Nvidia's is a free software, like open source, no tracking front end for YouTube, so you can watch YouTube videos without um, like being tracked. Um, but it also has no recommendation, which is how I got all my videos. And, um, you know, like, it's just a worse experience, right? So, um, um, Yeah, so, um, what, uh, oh yeah, so the reason, so ThinkPad T480s, a lot of, ThinkPad T420s, a lot of people get them because you can get Libreboot on them, which is a special type of, um, BIOS, it's like a free software BIOS that you flash onto the motherboard, um, and that's a lot of fun, that's, you know, I'll probably get an older ThinkPad to do that for fun at some point because that seems cool. But um, there's sort of, there's sort of I I feel like there's no reason to actually do Librebooting. Let me go to is it Libreboot.org? Hey, yeah, okay. Why should you use Libreboot? Libreboot gives you freedoms that you can't otherwise get with most other boot firmware. Can you read this? Yeah. Plus faster. Um, boot speeds and better security. It's extremely powerful and configurable for many use cases. We believe in the freedom to study, share, modify, and use software without any restriction. One of the fundamental human rights. Human rights that everyone must have. What? Um, in this context, software freedom matters. Your freedom matters. Education matters. Right to repair matters. Many people use proprietary boot firmware, even if they use a Libre OS. Proprietary firmware often contains backdoors and can be buggy. The Libreboot project was founded in December 2013 with the express purpose of making core boot firmware accessible for non-technical users. So, I don't know. Um, better, like, what does it mean, better security? Oh, okay, you can, like... So, assuming you're using Grub and not, like, System D boot, you can, it seems like you can, um... You can like encrypt your bootloader, which uh, I didn't know you couldn't do. I, you know, I, I actually don't know much about this, but um, yeah, uh, it seems like the only meme with Libreboot is that um, like the actual like meta reason to use it is because um, it's uh, it's faster. Like it things boot faster, which is real, um, but. Been talking for 23 minutes and half of this has been like silence. Um, I hope in my lifetime AI video editing gets better so then I can like pump my video into like a little script thing and it can cut out all the silent sections. That would be cool. Um, and so then I don't have to do any work. Um, OBS is really just a wrapper for FFmpeg, um, at least on Linux. I, I don't know how it is for other things. Um, but, you know, it, um, I, I constantly think about the concept of, like, making some sort of script that would automatically put, like, some sort of video output on my screen as a window and, like, start recording on FFmpeg with, like, my audio and ideal, like, ideally it would constantly be running and it would just, like, start when I plug in my webcam. That would be cool. Um, and so then I can do that right? Uh, then, as soon as I unplug my webcam, it would open up GIMP, so then I could make my thumbnail. Like, like, something very hyper-specific like that, like, but I feel like that's a little silly, and I feel like it adds a lot more points of failure, um, because what if something updates, you know, I use Arch, what if something updates and, like, arguments are, like, a little different, you know, and I, I have to do research on that and find out, like, that seems like a little more trouble than just, like, opening OBS and just, like, doing everything a little manually. Not everything has to be automatic. Um, but yeah, okay, I think that's it.
Um, I'm gonna let this video get to 25 seconds. Minutes. See you, dude.